cerebral spinal fluid that your nervous system sits in, a part of that fluid is also found in your jacula. Welcome back brothers. So in this video we're going to be exploring this idea of the value of semen. Now what I've taken here is uh, an excerpt from this particular book by Swami Sivananda on chapter 6. Now I will include a link below as this is just one chapter of uh, several I believe. So you can go out, go through it at your own uh, leisure and start picking out some of the pieces that you may uh, find valuable for your own specific journey. But I thought this particular chapter had um, a particular um, heightened value to it and I wanted to share it with you. We're going to go through some of the ancient uh, Vedic uh, literature and the value of uh, Brahmacharya, as many of you know, which also refers to the uh, idea of semen retention and nofap in the more modern uh, communities. And we're also going to explore um, uh, a modern scientific acknowledgement of this particular Vedic um, tradition. So I'll read some excerpts for you here. So my dear brothers, the vital energy, the vidya that supports your life, which is the prana of pranas, the energy of energy, uh, which shines in your sparkling eyes, which beams in your shining cheeks, is a great treasure for you. Remember this point well. Vidya is the quintessential, uh, quintessence of blood. Uh, I'm sure many of you would have heard this phrase before, but one drop of semen is manufactured out of 40 drops of blood. So it's the highest quality fluid that the body can produce. And uh, Swami Sivananda even references uh, here, according to Ayurveda, semen is the last datu. Now, datu refers to this idea of the seven elements in the body, of which semen is the last. Uh, which is formed out of uh, food, so the energy that we put into the body. Um, once you start stripping away the uh, descriptions of things and we come back to the uh, root cause of what essence something is in the world, all it is is a transmutation of energy. Everything is energy. Me speaking to you is energy. And here you can see the transmutation of food, which gets manufactured out of child. I'll highlight it here. Out of child comes blood, out of blood the flesh, out of the flesh comes fat, out of the fat comes bone, out of bone comes marrow, and out of the marrow comes semen. So referencing again, this is the highest quality fluid the body can produce. The value of this biological tissue um, it is what uh, needs the most energy in order to reproduce. You mean, we must we must again acknowledge to the point um, what the function or what rather the potential of that particular fluid has in the right circumstances it can support another human life and that in itself is one of the powers of the divine creator himself and once you acknowledge that you begin to acknowledge your your innate divinity your innate powers um, for you are powerful. Now, um, we'll move on here. So it nourishes the physical body, the heart and the intellect. Only that man who uses the physical body, the heart and the intellect can have perfect brahmacharya. A wrestler who uses his physical body only but keeps the intellect and the heart undeveloped cannot expect to have full brahmacharya. He can have brahmacharya of the body but not of the mind and the heart. The semen that belongs to the heart and the mind will certainly flow out. If an aspirant does only japa and meditation, he does not develop the heart. But if he does not practice the physical exercise, he will have only mental brahmacharya. A lot of references here to this idea of the uh, perfect human being, as the occultist was referenced. So if you've watched some of my videos on the occult perspective on uh, sexual continence, abstinence and uh, conservation of that particular fluid, they are very much of the opinion that um, in order to attain the uh, highest evolution of the human being, we are to develop in several different uh, practices of the body, be it mental, physical, emotional, spiritual. They want to be very um, all-round uh, and well-developed in that way. And you can see here um, 
similar examples of how the yogis uh, want to emulate that kind of um, holistic practice in all those elements. So the portion of semen which goes to, un, uh, to nourish the heart and the body will flow out, but an advanced yogi who dives deep in meditation will have full brahmacharya, even if he does not partake in physical exercise. So we've talked about the quint, uh, quintessence of food or blood, or food and blood. Now, I want to get on uh, here to the modern medical opinion of this particular practice. Now, a lot of this material that you will have uh, been familiar with, especially if you are uh, a subscriber to this channel. Um, but we don't often get the uh, the more rational thinkers. I don't perhaps uh, advertise or merit their points as much as I should, considering the claims of such a practice like this. I mean, it it seems almost otherworldly when you begin to dive into the benefits of this particular practice and what um, things it can advance, not only advance, but also cure. So if you have anything like autoimmune conditions, uh, there's been cases where it has um, proved to be rather otherworldly, rather supernatural. But this is a modern medical opinion of the ancient Vedic practice of uh, Brahmacharya. So eminent European medical men also support the statement of the yogins of India. I believe that's a typo, that should be yogis of India. Uh, Dr. Dr. Nicole says, it is a medical and physiological fact that the best blood in the body goes to the elements of the reproduction in both uh, sexes. We talked about prime directives in a couple of videos uh, previously. Your functions as an organism on the most fundamental level, you know, if we cut through your your social needs and perhaps your uh, um, your interests and things like that, your body will only prioritize the behaviors to eat to sustain the function of the organism and to have sex to uh, ensure the reproduction of the species. Um, that is what your whole behavior is articulated around. Talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, so survival, essentially. So, of course, it makes complete scientific and biological sense to say that the best blood in the body goes to form the elements that facilitate that uh, prime directive. In a pure and orderly life, this matter is reabsorbed. It goes back into the circulation and ready to form the finest brain and nerve and muscular tissues. This vital fluid of men, uh, of man carried back and diffused through his system makes him manly, strong, brave and heroic. Again, if we think about the prime directives of the species when you're conserving that particular energy you're communicating to your body and to the environment that you're not being su successful in that particular pursuit that you're not being successful um, at reproducing and when your body starts to receive the feedback of hey uh, we haven't reproduced in a while we haven't experienced orgasm or ejaculation it then takes matters into its own hands. It starts to reinforce some of the more masculine traits that the scientist is speaking about here, uh, making him manly, strong, brave, and heroic. It's a, it's a, it's a feedback, it's, a, it's an adaptation, you can think about it in that sense, that you are being unsuccessful and you will be amazed to what end the body will um, assist you in that particular pursuit, if it realizes that it's not, uh, it's not being successful in that particular vein. So if it is wasted, however, it leaves him effeminate, weak, physically debilitated, and prone to sexual irritation and disordered function, a wretched nervous system, epilepsy, and various other diseases and death. The suspension of the use of the generative organs is attained is attended excuse me with notable increases of bodily and men, uh, bodily and mental and spiritual vigor if the spermatic secretion in men is continuous it must either be expelled or reabsorbed as a result of the most patient and pers uh, preserving scientific investigation it has been found that whenever these seminal secretions are concerned conserved and thereby reabsorbed into the system, it goes towards enriching the blood and strengthening the brain. I talk about this um, 
in my course quite extensively and go into quite minutiae details, but um, I'll just give you a little sneak peek here, I guess, is um, the matter uh, in which your reproductive fluid is formed um, comes at the consequence of your nervous system. So if you were to, um, I have a diagram in my, in my, um, in my course, but the cerebral spinal fluid that your nervous system sits in, a part of that fluid is also found in your ejaculate. So when you, when you uh, are not of the practice of conserving it, you are starting to diminish those uh, quite vital nutrients needed for regular cognitive function. So when you begin to conserve that fluid, you're going to see heightened um, heightened uh, value and function in that particular uh, pursuit. Um, and strengthening the brain. Okay, so Dr. Dio thinks that the conserv conservation of this element is essential to strength of the body, vigor of mind, and keenness of the intellect. Another writer, Dr. E. P. Miller says, all waste of spermatic secretions, whether voluntary or involuntary, is a direct waste of the life force. It is almost universally con conceded that the choicest elements of uh, the blood enters the composition of the spermatic uh, secretions. If these conclusions are correct, then it follows the chaste state, uh, the chaste life is essential to man's well-being. Now I'm going to pause there, and um, I'm going to include the link, or you could probably just copy the link uh, in the video here if you want to read a little bit more, because there are uh, 16 chapters in this particular free PDF online, so please feel free to check it out. I wanted to share with you that particular chapter as I thought it was uh, of extraordinary value. My friends, I have a free course that I mentioned um, in the latter part of this video, Sexual Energy Mastery. It kind of condenses a lot of the information, especially here as well, but from numerous other sources, the occult, the yogis, um, some of even the um, more ancient uh, Christian uh, analogies pertaining to sexual continence in that particular book and it's going to take you from if you are struggling with this particular practice if you have any addictions and i will take you systematically step by step to uh, a life free from the degenerate material that is out there or online on the website and things like that and to a life where you are walking the path of the brahmachari as sadhguru would said walk in the path of the divine walking the path of kings so if that's something that interests you my friends and the link is in the description below would love to see you and um if you find, if you found, excuse me, anything valuable in this video, you can subscribe to my channel and I will continue to bring you uh, some interesting content uh, very, very soon. So take care, my friends.